Illinois to create gender price control inspectors in name of equality. Welcome to iState TV's News Watch with your host, Paul Gordon. News and views for people who want to build a state of I and iState, a state of the one, by the one, for the one. And now on with our News Watch story. So apparently there was a comprehensive, purely scientific Objective study conducted by New York City's Department of Consumer Affairs back in 2015. The study claims to have compared about 800 products to see the differences between the pricing for products aimed at women and girls and products aimed at men and boys. Well, the study showed there was a devastating, I mean a devastating 7% difference between the prices. Now, this study maybe shoulda, coulda, woulda died the death of obscurity given the nature of its claims of, of similar products with little regard to whether those products were exactly the same or, or, or heaven for fen taking into consideration such things as demand for the women's and girls' products versus demand for the men's and boys' products. But it didn't die. No. A feminist leftist state senator from the fine state of Illinois, the same state that gave us Abe Lincoln the, well, if I have to free the slaves to keep the South from breaking up with me, okay, president of Civil War fame, introduced legislation that would amend an existing law. Well, here... Here's the actual bill that, spoiler alert, became law after Republican Governor Bruce Rauner signed the legislation. This is the key part here. Amends the Consumer Fraud and Deceptive Business Practices Act. Provides that it is not unlawful to differentiate prices for services based upon factors including, but not limited to, time, difficulty, cost of providing the services, and expertise. Requires tailors, barbershops, hair salons, dry cleaners, and laundries to post a service price list. Provides for an opportunity to cure a violation and provides that a subsequent violation is subject to the penalty provisions of the Consumer Fraud and Deceptive Business Practices Act. Ah, the name of this uh, feminist senator is Melinda Bush, who also introduced legislation last year called the quote-unquote pink tax, which eliminated taxes on women's hygiene products. Hey, 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 eliminating taxes is always good. So good on you, but pink? Really? Did you just assume a color's gender? Did you just assume that only women, whatever that means, buy feminine hygiene products? Do your feminist friends know how gender phobic you are? Now, how about the language in that? No holes here except for the ones wide enough for the Titanic to have cruised through and escaped the iceberg dead ahead and not even been aware there was an iceberg near them at all. Too soon, I know. They'll give exceptions to the price differences if you can prove the differences are due to, quote unquote, time, difficulty, cost of providing the services, and expertise. Now, of course, you realize that the providers of these services will not be able to magically produce a justification for why their prices are different. Nope. Nope. It's going to cost them. It's going to cost them the time of administering. Yes, see, they'll have to go ahead and figure out what, if any, differences there are between quote unquote similar products and services. But only if they figure, after they figure out exactly what similar services really are. And of course, anytime they have any changes in product lines, they'll have to go through that process all over again. Facing the scrutiny of the state, such as uh, these businesses will, thanks to an anti-free market law signed by a Republican governor, will tend to motivate owners to make sure they know what's what, which most likely will mean hiring lawyers to help them determine what's similar and what can be justified as being different in price. Now, did you notice one factor to pricing that's missing? The actual only factor 
that really matters in a free market. It's a little thing called demand. The factors that this legislation lists are allowing for differences in pricing between similar male and female products. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Binary genderism. I think I just seriously triggered myself. Reveal um, a bit of a Marxist view on pricing that has never, ever considered the absolute subjective nature of the price yourselves especially if you're a, a lefty economist wannabe, value. Yep, value is subjective. The minute you try to artificially control the subjective nature of value, you will create unintended consequences, like running salons out of business because they can no longer charge premium prices for women who are willing to pay top price to get a similar haircutting service that men are willing to pay at, let's just say, probably a lower price. And remember, folks, this price control, which is essentially what this is, was signed into law by a Republican governor. So don't let's pretend the Republicans are any more free market advocates than the Democrats are. The price control legislation goes into effect New Year's Day. What follows will be a whole new wing of bureaucrats that will bureaucats. I'm going to stick with that bureaucrats that will specialize in understanding similar products and services. This is where your agent Smith comes to play in the image that you saw in the beginning of the video. And when differences are justified for reasons that have nothing to do with the final price, which is this parties agree that they'll exchange this for this subjectively because value is subjective. What will follow will be the closure of ironically businesses run by women to offer women's products and services unique to their needs. What will follow will be special allowances that will be written by regulators over the coming months and years to carve out special protections for political allies, even most likely politician run businesses or the businesses run by their family members and friends. Friends. What will follow will be political targeting of businesses owned by people that crossed politicians, maybe even, maybe even the whole political system one too many times. So, while it might sound good the way most of the mainstream media is covering the story, especially Illinois media, guaranteeing that women will no longer pay 7% more for similar products and services is not as simple as it sounds. Even if you could objectively, scientifically determine what exactly are similar products and services, even if you could objectively scientifically determine when price differences are justified by the criterion offered in this legislation, none of it accounts for the basic economic principle this law and others like it violates. The subjective nature of value. Now, as an extra bonus, not just Illinois, but many other fiefdoms from within the empire of the American coercive enterprise will have an opportunity to study how tolerant the folks are of price controls. Yay! Come, you know, fascism, mercantilism, mercan mercanism. That's come, you know, fascism, mercanism. At the end of the day, Melinda Bush simply wrote legislation that offers the political class more power to wield against its enemies and more carrots to offer its potential allies. She did nothing whatsoever to advance the actual cause of, of, of gender equality. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm, I'm triggered. I'm, I'm still on that whole binary genderism thing. She most likely did far more to hurt any notion of gender equality by potentially harming inordinately women owned and run businesses. Good on you, Melinda. Way to be a team player. Team political class, that is. Thank you for watching our iState.tv's News Watch with your host, Paul Gordon. iState.tv offers news and views for people who want to build a state of I, an iState, a state of the one, by the one, for the one. If you like what you see, be sure you like, share, comment, and above all else, subscribe. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter by going to at iStateTV, but you can find all of our links to everything we do at istv.me. After you subscribe, be sure you hit that bell.
show to get the latest video alerts from the iState YouTube channel, which you can find at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash iState. And if you don't subscribe, if you don't hit that bell, then maybe you should move to Somalia.